Hello everybody, welcome back to another video for the day. Now we're diving right back into r slash Tales of Neckbeard because everybody likes story time. Beforehand, you know the deal. Like the video, comment down below during the video if there you see something you would like to discuss, and afterwards consider subscribing. Let's go. Our first story comes for us from username Lars Amandi. The very first Neckbeard I've met tries to hook up with me at a Comic Con while in cosplay. This is like my second time posting something on Reddit, so if I make a mistake, please tell me and I say sorry in advance. Also, English is not my first language, and I apologize if I make annoying mistakes. This is going to not be that interesting, but why not? I don't even know if it fits in the Neckbeard stories, but some elements make me think so. So, it happened years ago. I was a 16-year-old girl in the biggest Comic-Con in my country. I always attended it every year, and that time, it was my first ever. This was an exhibition of one of my favorite anime and some event related to it. Because of that, I was cosplaying as one of the characters from it. The anime I'm talking about is JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, which is quite popular now, but back then it was not as mainstream as it is now, so it was uncommon to see a cosplayer from one of its characters. That said, some people were really happy to see me in that cosplay, and I was really happy to be recognized, and one of them is the neckbeard protagonist of this story. I was going to an exhibition I mentioned before, and on the way I met him. I was alone, since I was intended to meet my friends there. When we saw me, he screamed in joy and immediately reached me to ask for a picture. I was a bit weirded out, but I accepted. He looked greasy, had the trademark neckbeard, and looked at me strangely. I think he was in his 20s. He gave me his phone to one of his friends that was with him to take the picture. He pulled me closer to him and grabbed my waist. I was uncomfortable as frick. Sometimes it happens to me to be bothered like this or even harassed while in cosplay, but that was the, my very first time and it was always disgusting and awful. Then he started talking to me, asking me what my name was, how I knew Jojo, and other stuff. Amazed that a beautiful girl like me watched anime and so on. He was really close to my face and I was feeling really uncomfortable as you can imagine, even scared because I was alone. Luckily, one of his friends, seeing how the situation was going, took him and went away with an excuse, looking at me with the most embarrassed face ever. By the way, he tried to ask me for my Facebook profile. I don't know why, but I was stupid enough to give him my real profile name. He didn't contact me, luckily. I just want to say that at cons like this, there are a lot of good people as well. The biggest part is kind and respectful, but sometimes it happens to be that you find a guy like this neckbeard. During that con, I met a lot of wonderful people, and I'm still in contact with some of them. Just don't take it as a depiction of that whole fandom slash community. And that's the part that does kind of suck about conventions, is that some people see just the bad apples and they think that defines the entirety of the event. And when somebody's able to see the majority versus the bad minority of it, then that's when you really can enjoy something. Like, that's why I keep on going to MAGFest every year and hell, I'm already looking to booking a room towards next year's. And the best part is, I'll be able to keep you guys updated on anything going on because I've recently been able to unlock the YouTube community or the YouTube stories tab which is effectively YouTube's version of snapchat but for subscribers I mean I do have a Twitter and an Instagram but I feel like you guys will like it more straight from the horse's mouth on the same platform okay I got a little sidetracked we're getting back to the main point of this all don't be a creep at the convention just because somebody's dressed up as your favorite character like don't get weird with them our next story comes to us from username aqua m13 the neckbeard employee today I bring you all a story that happened just today so it is still fresh in my mind I'm on a mobile so forgive for format and any errors character Characters are here. Me, 23, female, nerd girl, just trying to make some extra money for the holidays. Boss man, later 50s, owner of the store, will trade money for merch and always gives a fair price, and NB is neckbeard employee, can't take a hint. Let the story begin. So my town has an antiques mall, and about the mall is a shop that is every nerd's dream. It's all geeky stuff, and the owner gets most of his merchandise by customers trading them in for money. It's a way for people to make some money selling things without going through the hassle of trying to sell everything themselves. Boss man, gives a pretty decent amount, and other shops like this would normally rip off people so they can make most of the profit, but boss man is a good people. Anyways, I had someone move out recently, and she left a bunch of stuff behind and told me she didn't want it anymore, and to just get rid of it. So I decided to sell it. She left behind several action figures, her Xbox 360 with all her games for it, over 50 mangas, and a Pikachu plushie. So I decided to take the stuff to boss man's shop to sell it and make a little extra holiday money so I can afford gifts for my family and friends. I hand boss man the stuff and let him do his thing to look up what the items are worth so he can give me a fair price. As I wait, I browse around the store, thinking maybe I can buy something here since a lot of my friends are geeks like me. That's when Neckbeard
beard shows up. He does give off an odor, and he has an unkempt full beard, and he is about 5 inches taller than me. I'm 5 foot 3. The shop has no dress code, so he's in cargo shorts and a long sleeve Marvel shirt. I can see just at the faint hints of pit stains with keys around his neck. Now, I'm dressed in plain black pants, an oversized Spider-Man sweater, and the bare minimum of makeup, foundation, and lip gloss, so I'm not at my most attractive. He asks if I need help with anything, and I tell him no, I'm just looking at the comic book statuses. Then he proceeds to keep talking about this one statue of Black Canary and all about her character. I cut him off telling him I know who she is and I've actually cosplayed as her. Stupid of me to say that last part, I know, but I Inside is 2020. You're a cosplayer? Can I see some of your cosplays? His eyes just light up at that. Oh god, why couldn't I have just kept my mouth shut? I've never noticed Neckbeard at the store before, so I guess he's just hired help for the season. I politely tell him no, and I'm just shopping. I slowly try to walk away, but he follows me and keeps talking. He keeps talking about other stuff in the store, but not in the way of trying to sell me it, but in the way of asking if I knew what it was. Meanwhile, I'm just looking at other things to make it look like I'm more interested in the merch than him. He-Man was such a good show. These figures are so cool. Do you like He-Man too, or was that your before your time? Oh, you're looking at Power Rangers? Yeah, those are cool, so cool. I love Power Rangers. Do you like any anime? This goes on for a while, but I'm too polite to be a butthole to an employee of Boss Man's because Boss Man has always been kind to me, and I don't want to snap at maybe just an overeager employee. But, oh no, it gets worse. Neckbeard then asks the big question that shatters any doubt of why he was talking to me. Do you have a boyfriend? Yes, I do. I hope he treats you right. Some guys don't appreciate how amazing it is to have a beautiful woman who's into these kind of things. We've been together for over a year. He appreciates me and treats me right. Good, because if he doesn't, you know where to find me. Thankfully, Boss Man comes over and tells me the estimates for my items. I gladly take my money and turn to Neckbeard. Well, it was nice talking, but I'm gonna go now. Well, can I have your number? I don't give it out, sorry. I'm really not sorry. I then quickly say goodbye to Boss Man and tell him I'll see him around and head the frick out of there. Now, the story should have ended there, but unfortunately, it doesn't. A few hours later, I check my Facebook and I have a new friend request. It's him. He sends me a message saying, Hi, and I ask how he found my Facebook. I never even gave him my name. His response is this. I asked Wonder Woman, another employee there who I am friends with because she used to work at the comic shop where I work at, who you are, and she told me your name. I hadn't seen Wonder Woman there when I was at the shop, so I don't know how the frick he knew to ask her my name, or how she knew he was talking about me. I just simply ignored his message after that, declined the friend request, and hopefully he gives up. In all fairness, if I was in your shoes, I would have definitely brought this up with Boss Man. Like, seriously, he might only be seasonal, but if you bring that up, he is definitely going to get written up for it for harassing a customer. Now, I don't know if this is still going on to this day, but if it does happen any time in the future, you'll know exactly what to do. Just bring it up with management. They'll take their care of the rest. Our last story comes to us from username Katanapool. Neckbeard asked to see a knife, is denied, and then proceeds to cry. So this happened while I was a kid, and this is probably around 2011 when I was around 15 years old. There was this store in Hawaii where I grew up that sold anime stuff and knives. I liked anime, but I really liked knives as a kid. The whole COD face. Call of Duty. Since I was 15 though, I wasn't allowed to see the knives without a guardian with me, so my dad came into the store with me and we looked at knives and to enjoy the atmosphere of the store. The store had some of those knives that are so big they're unpractical, but just fun to hold and look at. So I asked to see the knife from Rambo 3, Beast of a Knife. My dad and I just hold it and do we just enjoy this iconic knife. This is the part with the neckbeard. He was probably a 5 foot 10, 200 pounds, no beard, one of those anime beanies with cat ears and wore a trench coat in Hawaii. This dude was lurking around the store for some time since we walked in. I've noticed him before, but didn't really think much of it because I was a shy kid. So he spoke in a very odd way, like his tone would fluctuate when he spoke. But he came up and said this. Ooh, what a cool knife. Can I see it? My dad and I got a real bad vibe from him and really didn't want to give it to him. He had his hand extended to take the knife from us, but we were reluctant to give it to him. My dad was holding the knife when he asked, and we just stood there in a moment of silence, not not wanting to give it to him. So while this little interaction was going on, the employee who let us see the knife was just standing there behind the counter. My dad, while maintaining eye contact with the neckbeard, just returns the knife to the employee saying this. You have to ask the employee to see it. Without a moment of hesitation, the employee says no. 
The neckbeard begins to cry, like lip quivering and eyes beginning to water. He does what I think was a dramatic scene from an anime, running away, crying with his face in his sleeve. The thing is, the sleeve was too in his face and he ran into a shelf and fell over. It was a really just sad sight. The three of us, my dad, the employee, and I were just standing there like, word? I would return to the store as I grew up and just enjoy being in there since I practically grew up with it. I would occasionally see the neckbeard doing the same routine wearing the same clothes. Thanks for reading. You know, the one thing I've kind of learned from this is if you're going to run away like a cliche, uh, don't be a dumb cliche. That and also look where you're running if you're uh, actually running so you don't fall over and hurt yourself. All right, and with that, that is going to have to be it for the video. If you would like what you had seen, be sure to like the video, comment down below what you liked about the video, and consider subscribing and turning on those notifications. I'll be sure to see you guys in the next one. Thank you so much for watching, and bye-bye.